Well, here we are again. The Barry Funkhauser program is on with Joe. Joe, how's your oh. how's your pearly whites there doing? I'm there? back. I'm back. Man, I had a I had a bad week last week. I had lots and lots of uh, medical issues. I mean, was it bad? To... I mean, you you had a doctor oh, checkup, well... like a regular appointment, and then suddenly oh, it was not a regular out. appointment. <laughs> <laughs> it was very different from a regular appointment. Um, if y'all want to know. Um, here's too much information before we get into our interview here with oh, a great. I can't wait. person. Um, but uh, we'll talk about my colonoscopy later. Man, that was that was that was interesting. <laughs> Joe, can lot, we not really talk about it? <laughs> yeah, we can. Just for Erica's sake, I won't talk about it. But can we then, just yeah, say like, that that happened and then that's it. Sure, move and move sure. On. sure okay. but I I feel now that I have experienced it, I need to warn people about it. Um. <laughs> Because it's not it's not the, the actual procedure. You're knocked out. You don't even know what's going on. It's the entire 36 hours before. That sucks. We'll talk about that at, at, a, at a different point in time. <laughs> um, but besides that, yeah, you said, uh, uh, you, you know, I've been trying to get like I have interviews, you know, lost my job. And so I've been interviewing and I had a really important interview last Friday. And on Wednesday night after dinner, one of my veneers popped off. And uh, that hadn't happened. Like, I got my veneers 15. Now, dude, that's your front tooth, right? It was like one. It's not my front tooth. It's like the one next to my front tooth. And I was like freaking out because I'm like, oh, man, I look like a freaking Oki. <laughs> and I have like a really important interview tomorrow on Zoom. And oh, so I was like scrambling to get my dentist. Uh, it, it all worked out. I, I think I did okay. So, okay, <laughs> all of my problems, that, that was last week. So, Dude, let's, I think you should have done the more. interview with the tooth. No, the tooth. no, <laughs> no, I'm trying to make a good impression on these people. I'm trying to get a job oh, so man. I don't end up in a living in a van down by the river. So, so let's that's bring that's in fun. Erica. Erica's here oh, from Heartless fun. Bastards, and you're in a band, Erica. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Hi, welcome to the Hi. show. Yay. Thank you. Figured we'd start it off with too much information about our host. Yeah, sure. You, you sure you don't want to talk about my colonoscopy? <laughs> it's really exciting. No, we're not going to talk about that. No. We're going to talk about your, your dog, Piper, though. That's for sure. Well, I mean, first off, Heartless Bastards, you can, guys have been around as a band for over 10 years, from what I understand. Nice. Is that right? Is that um, good effect? Yeah, I mean, I started the project in 2004, so I've actually been doing it almost 20 years. Wow. When, where are or, you? I mean, actually, I started in 2003, but we did our first show in 2004. Wow, I haven't done oh, anything yeah. for 20 years straight, except for Survive. So, congratulations, that's impressive. Wow. So, Thank you. So, where are you from? I uh, grew up in Dayton, Ohio, uh, and I started the band in Cincinnati. I lived there about 10 years before I moved to Austin. So, yeah. And then, uh, which, is, which is better? Which is better? No, Austin God, or? That's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> is it? No. I, uh, no, I, I love Austin. I've been here, oh gosh, 15 years or so. Um, but I love Ohio. I I love my my roots. Um, Cincinnati well, has a lot of great things. And I would think that like late spring, early summer in Ohio is just like awesome. Just like weather wise and like vibe wise, everyone's out because it's like they just survived a brutal winter and they're like, oh, it's the first time we've seen sun in three or four months. And like everybody goes outside, you know, because like in California or, or in Austin where it's nice all the time, people are just out all the time. So I, I can only imagine. I've never been to Ohio in the, in the late spring, but I, I just imagine that it's lovely. Yeah, I mean, I feel like um, I mean, it's California is a little more temperate, but, um, you know, Ohio has its winters, but Texas has its heat. I mean, I think it's. Uh, been a hundred degrees every day for the last already. I mean, yeah, hundred plus. Right. Oh, that's 100. right. Yeah, oh, plus. you guys are like stuck like, in a I heat mean, dome probably right about hundred and five every yeah, day. Fifteen at one point. And it's Man, how's that, how's June. That Texas, I think they how's predict that Texas electric grid doing. Not, not very long. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, but yeah. Erica, I mean, really, do you do you really have a <laughs> home though? Because I figure a touring artist, you're on the road a lot, many months of the year. Is that right? Yeah. Are you, are you at home a lot? Um, I mean, you're right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, well, I uh, we t tour quite a bit, but um, and I. I, I think uh, traveling is a little bit of my writing process. So I might do road trips to write, but um, uh, I like being home a lot also, you know, when I can. So I've been home a lot this year for the earlier part of this year. Okay. And so from, I'm, I'm just going to assume something here, Erica from heartless bastards. I'm just going to assume that you somehow managed to get your parents' record collection when you were younger. Uh, Joan Jett, Bob Dylan, Tom Petty, all that stuff. The the traditional music of yore. And is that how it came about? How did you get inspired to play music as a career for your life? Uh, I, You know, uh, I wanted to do this since I was like, old enough to think about doing anything but I don't you know it's funny my dad doesn't really or he didn't really listen to music much I I mean he might put on like an elevator music station or you know and um at one time when I had the the band lineup had changed and he referenced Herb Alpert in the Tijuana Brass. And I was like thinking, oh, is that what my dad listened to? But I, he was, and, and he said, no, he, that was just an example of some, some members changing. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but my mom was an avid music fan, but my parents were a bit older. You know, my my father just passed away in October, but he was he was uh, gonna be eighty, gosh, eighty seven. So, um, condolences. And my parents were fourteen years apart, so um, you know the, the Tom Petty would have, I mean, been a bit on the. Um, I mean, my mom was probably in her thirties when Tom Petty came out. So, um, yeah, but my mom loved jazz was a big, uh, musical style and that she loved, but R and B like a lot of like old Otis Redding and Aretha Franklin and, um, stuff. yeah, yeah. A lot of that, like old, um, I mean, I'm like drawing blanks right now, but yeah, a lot of very, very old soul music and R and B was something that my mom and I bonded on a lot. And I, I think was really inspirational. Okay. So you have a beautiful voice. Thank I, you. Say. And I'm going to assume I'm going out on a limb here and I'm going to assume that you didn't start singing this kind of music you probably started in like elementary school in some other kind of situation what how did you become a singer um you know it's funny because as much as you know i said this is something i wanted to do since i was old enough to think about doing anything which i don't know i feel like i was telling my family i was going to be a singer when i was like four years old or something but <laughs> i was um a pretty shy kid and I never sang in front of my family or anybody really. I, I didn't even know if I really could, to be honest, but I just, it's, it's what I always felt like I was going to do. I, I did get in like a choir magnet, uh, music program, um, in junior high. Um, and stuff but um I didn't really like that program I feel like I learned some things about like breathing techniques and things but I just felt like I got given like sometimes the, the worst songs to sing so <laughs> yeah it's hard enough to have the courage to go <sighs> up there but to be assigned your songs I mean like 
Mm-hmm. I got signed that song, like the toe bone connected to the foot bone, <laughs> bone. you know, like, oh, no. <laughs> like, come on. Like, it was no, like it's, the- <laughs> you're you're kind of uh, there's some people that take they know they what they want to do. And the first thing they do, they learn what they don't want. And it sounds like <laughs> this is like, OK, I still want to be a singer, but this is absolutely not my vibe at all. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think um I when I hit high school and was old enough to drive, I had met some friends that started they would go to like kind of DIY punk rock shows and things. I got really into sort of um punk and and just um non sort of pop sort of the non-pop world go ahead and I got Joe, really this into is your classic department. rock um were you listening to like tsol and stuff here you go what's tsol i don't know what that oh, is geez. my goodness oh. that's a different punk kind of punk rock it doesn't it it's a different kind of punk i rock. mean i i guess it was more sort of a lot of diy and underground shows i mean i, I guess i'm drawing blanks at the moment to be honest like i mean some artists aren't even like really that well known i think it was just seeing like some regional band or like a live band in like a small venue versus like concerts and it was sort of inspirational and um and and then i got into like i don't know john spencer's blues explosion and um gosh i'm just i can't even think of what all I was listening to back then but uh and we had a great scene in Dayton I mean guided by voices um yeah and um the breeders were kind of you know in the top 40 I think they even hit number one but it was kind of indie sounding and they're from my breeders isn't the breeders part of like three other bands big bands Am I mis- yeah, like Kim was in the Pixies. Um, yeah, Breeders are a super group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, gosh. Um, I'm free. Oh, Tanya Don Lee, I think is her name. She was in Belly. and um, Yeah, those are the two that I'm thinking of. But yeah. yeah. Oh, you forgot about. Well, I mean, you, you mentioned Kim, but don't forget about Kelly. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, but you had asked if um, the members were in a super group. And I don't oh, oh, know oh, sure, sure, project. Sure, sure. I was just trying to think of what other groups stemmed no, you, into you, the breeders. No, uh, but right, definitely, right. yeah, yeah. You, I, either, they're a duo, I, just, I just, everybody duo always there. says Kim, but no one ever says Kelly. And I'm like, oh, man, Kelly must get oh, like the no, ball, end of the I, deal. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I'm not sure what bands Kelly was in previous to the breeders. So that's, yeah. It was like a, a melting pot of insane talent that you were coming up. That's why you don't remember anything. You're like, you know what? Every like Tuesday and Saturday was like an amazing show. <laughs> so then, yeah, I mean, yeah, we had a pretty good scene scene going on. When I was so, when did you when did you when did you finally go from being a uh, shower stall superstar, which is what I am because I only sing in the shower, <laughs> to to actually being comfortable singing in front of a crowd. Oh, gosh. You know, I'm not even quite sure where that transition fully happened. And, and the reason I say that is because I think I did this for well over a decade before I really felt comfortable. <laughs> like, oh, wow. Even like you for know. a living. I, you know, I, I, um, Sometimes I think of myself more as like a songwriter that performs than sort of a performer. Although I think like we have like a strong stage show and presence, I think. But um, I just, you know, I even still get nervous sometimes before shows. I mean, I think that can be a little healthy, too, and um, good for energy. And I think it's just like I don't take for granted like. Yeah, you know, I try to be present with it and not make the assumption. I, I I just try to yeah be in the moment with it. But I, I mean, I think when I was an adult, I was like, okay, well now I'm an adult, and if this is what I really want to do, I should um 
probably okay. start. So what age were you it. when you what age were you when you felt like an adult? Because I'm I'm way older than you and I still I'm still. Not I there. mean, I, <laughs> I'm still like I feel I don't fully feel like an adult. I just mean. You know, when you get maybe I should rephrase that to when I got to the point where I had to be pay my own bills and be responsible for myself, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, yeah, because I definitely I feel um, uh, like a, a kid all the time still in so many ways. And I don't really want to stop, I think, uh, in that sense, I think. Uh, don't lose your childlike wonder. It makes your exactly. music better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to hold on to all that that I can. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess when I was about 18 or so, I just started trying to do open mic nights and really trying to learn how to play guitar. I mean, I just kind of am self-taught. I just, somebody showed me bar chords and different things. And it's just kind of, I think like the, uh, you know, it's almost like Ramones, like the in the sense of just sort of figuring figuring out your instruments as you go along. But you can kind right. of, I don't think you have to be classically trained and in a sense to to write a good song. And um, oh no, def I, definitely not. Yeah. But like open mic nights, that's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh -oh. let's fast forward now. So I'm so curious about the band name, but before I ask you about the band name, how did you get the band? Well, how did that form? Because you're like a solo, I assume you're a solo artist for a while, and then you're like, oh, I found something i need a drummer and a bassist and all that so how did that come about um well i think because i was a bit um shy or awkward i i it was kind of difficult to find a band initially um but my boyfriend at the time had recommended that i just try um doing like i could i can i'm not like super skilled in a lot of instruments but i can play multiple instruments and i was he recommended i just do uh like a recording um and so i just kind of put together a lot of the songs on my first album and but i felt like i wasn't a strong enough musician to actually go in the studio and do them so i did uh bring in a guitarist for some of the songs and a bass player and um and uh, a drummer and then i did my demo and then i actually i bartended at the time and i passed that demo out to anybody in the bar that looked like they might be remotely interested in uh my music like i i went through three cd burners i just i burned hundreds of those things and and I, it actually got a really good response and i was like emailing local clubs in town and anytime a bigger act came through that didn't have like a oh oh that was before i formed the band i guess <laughs> i'm getting ahead of myself but i felt um i I actually got a good response from it and in, in even some local bars in town, including the one I worked at, put it on the jukebox. And, and then it was like, I felt like people kind of started to take me a little more seriously and I was able to put together a live band. Um, and then I would email the local venues in town. And when like a bigger act would come through like a national act, I would, ask if I could open and support like if they weren't touring with support so I just I I it, I just was getting a really good response and I and I put a band together so um yeah okay so the name started. <laughs> what about the name oh oh um <laughs> well I was you know those like bar top games where they have like photo hunt and trivia and different kinds of um games um there was a 
multiple choice trivia game and it asked what Tom Petty's backing band was and the Heartless Bastards was one of the wrong answers. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. I, yeah, I just thought it was hilarious. It was Tom Petty and the Heartless Cause, Bastards. Cause it is, because that's fantastic. Fantastic. Oh man. You can't get it. You know, I'm also I was also a huge fan of Joan Jett and the Black Hearts, like growing up. And so it felt kind of reminiscent of Joan Jett. And I love Tom Petty. And it just yeah. I thought it sounded tough and rock and roll. (laughs) Yeah. It does sound tough and rock and roll. Did you laugh? Did you laugh <laughs> also, Carl, also uh, makes for a great uh, tattoo. <laughs> yes. Did you laugh for a minute when that came up? You're like, oh man, oh that's the name. I I I thought it was hilarious. I it it took a bit for me to like it dawn on me that that could, it wasn't like an instant light bulb where that's my new band name, but it was like. I thought it was so funny in that moment. And then when I was thinking of a name later, I was like, that that's it. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. It also has staying power. You know how like some uh, band names are like, wow, that is really 90s. Um, but no, this has this has staying power. It could be from the 70s to now. It, it just works. I think so. Yeah. I mean, it was like, yeah, sometimes, you know, when they, you, you go over to meet somebody you're seeing's parents or like, what's the, what do you do? And, you know, I don't know. Sometimes the name's a little like a little awkward, but I, yeah. What do you think about the drummer from Orgy and how he thought about it? <laughs> um, okay, so let me ask you a, <laughs> let me ask you a technical question now. Erica from Heartless Bastards now. What do you like better? Do you like the production side of the music industry or do you like the performance side of artistry? What's your, what fills your cup more? Um, I actually, um, feel like it's, it's a, it's a 50, 50 balance. Um, I, for me, it's probably pretty even, I think that um, I am challenged by both equally at times. And I I also love both, but um, like, I wouldn't want to just tour all the time. Like if I weren't creating new music um, and I wouldn't want to just be in the studio uh, or writing all the time either. So um I think it's really nice to, um, you know, do both. It kind of, um, you know, give, gives me a bit of variety where, you know, sometimes you you need to step away from writing. It's like a lot of critical thinking and, um, yeah. Then you need the craziness of the road to give you stuff to write about. Yeah, I mean that's true too. Um yeah. Um so I guess a balance, you know. So you're touring a lot now and it's not uh new to you. You've been on the road for quite some time showing the world what you're all about. Joe has a question about venues. He uh, likes to ask. Oh yeah, I love I love this question. Oh, and this is awesome because you're playing with um one of my favorite bands. When you when you play in, you're going home to Dayton, the, the original home, in September, right? And you're playing with Guided by Voices from Dayton. And then you're also playing with Dinosaur Jr. Man, I love Dinosaur Jr. They're awesome. Um, uh-huh. so that's, oh, wait, no. Oh, you're the Dinosaur Jr. is playing the night before. You're oh, playing with, yeah. You're I'm going to be there to for spill. both nights, so, though, because it's my hometown. So I guess I feel yeah. like we're sort of part of the event the two-day event but yeah build to spill is the day that we're playing which i love too yeah good times okay so if you could choose any venue in the entire world to play at what venue would you choose oh gosh you know i mean honestly i don't really have a favorite venue it's kind of like if i were to ask you what's your favorite song like do you have a favorite song I don't 
Uh, um, I have a favorite song per per, per genre. Yes, I'm a oh, list guy. You do? So I like yeah. I have lists of everything. E- Erica, uh, he's yeah. he's that guy. I'm not. I'm you. <laughs> I'm like you. He's that guy though. He's the category guy. I'm. Yeah. I'm like you can't you can't have a favorite anything. Yeah, it depends on your mood. It's just like, I mean, you know, there's that whole desert island thing, but it's like <laughs> if you were really stuck on a desert island and you had to listen to the same 10 songs, just that's all forever. I mean, that just even a good song would be get kind of old, I think. But I uh I don't know. I mean, I guess I would say that I would love to someday headline red rocks it's just cool and it's special um another one for red rocks barry yeah red rocks is leading the way a runaway winner really i mean is. but like i just i i love so many different venues and um sometimes i like the quirky off the beaten path kind of spots too like i love when we play some random mountain town <laughs> or something or a, some random desert town like uh we're doing Pappy and Harriet's uh in Pioneer Town outside Joshua oh, yeah. Tree oh yeah uh, I remember I actually tour. god who did I see there oh, it was years ago like the 90s um I saw Sublime there with no doubt no use for a name face to face one eye open and skank and pickle Man, that was a good show. But that's a really fun place to play because it's like, well, because you got to remember, it's like that's the Pioneer Town out in, it's Fontana, and it's uh, where they used to shoot all the old 1950s um, cowboy shows and stuff like that. There was that place out in Pioneer Town, and then there was the one that they featured in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Those are like the two, like, cowboy towns where they used to shoot all the the old television shows so it's really fun out there to play a show oh yeah i mean i wouldn't be surprised if they shot like star trek there too like all those rocks oh no that was vasquez rocks that's that's uh that was vasquez rocks that's out off the 14 uh between palmdale and lancaster Okay, I'm not. Quite I know a lot sure of random stuff, is, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of random stuff. It's a uh, uh, middle of nowhere. Is there really a band called Skank and Pickle? Skank and Pickle, you know, like because with ska, the dancing was called Skankin. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, and so it was Skank and Pickle, and man, they were so they were a really really fun band from so- SoCal. So they were on Asian Man Records. Good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good so that was fun. I, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a really good time at Pioneer Town. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, oh, we've been out. We've been out there a couple times. Nice. Okay, so you have an album out now. If I'm not uh, mistaken, it's been out for about a year. Is that right? Uh huh. Yeah. Well, a year and a half. Yeah. Okay, you're touring that one. We're gonna play a song from it. And the song, oh, I hope you like it. I hope it's the one you want. You never know. Is that sure? The song? I mean, I I like all of them. <laughs> Bill. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, sure. I love that one too. Yeah. You're not really a single kind of artist. You're like, oh, that's a question I was I meant to ask you is uh, what do you think that I think that's a joke question, though. You know, we ask about um, singles versus albums and like a lot of bands are coming around saying that they're releasing a single and a single and a single and albums are far and f- a few and few important nowadays. What is your take on that? Oh, um, I I don't I don't really know. I mean, um, I mean, I'm still writing. I mean, uh, you know, albums, but uh, I mean, I feel like they get different singles get laid out or released, and um, I don't, I don't know. I feel like the music industry is kind of like the wild west, and I don't. I mean. You know, I know with with press, sometimes um, 
it, it you know the press is going to want to write about an album not like one song so um i guess um yeah i don't know i'm just sort of doing my thing and i guess i'm still in the writing an album uh form mode which maybe is old fashioned but um yeah uh i, I love think that thought process yes I mean, although, you know, it's like I mentioned, I I can't tour all the time and I can't write all the time. So I think sometimes writing an album form gives me th when I'm in writing mode, it's that like break from touring a lot. So um, for me, maybe it just offers that balance that I need. That makes sense. Touring's hard. I don't think people yeah. understand just like how hard touring is being away from home all that time the driving you know it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot and sometimes you know it's it's a you do it, it takes a toll on you mentally as well so you do need that like time to slow down a little bit and like reassess and that's that, that writing time for you it sounds like yeah yeah it's good to plant your feet <laughs> exactly all right well I only have one final question, Erica, and um, <laughs> I really honestly don't know how you're going to answer. Sometimes I can kind of guess, but I have no clue. So are you ready for the final question? Sure. Okay. Erica from Heartless Bastards on tour now. The, uh, check out her Instagram and see the list of the summer tour, all the cities that you're going to. Erica, would you rather get into a battle to the death with one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses, a battle to the death? Hmm. Well, um, 100 duck-sized horses. Hmm. I love the well, thought process. I I love the time spent thinking about it. I don't know. I guess I would flip a coin on that one. Um, I mean, I, how about how about a hundred duck-sized horses? Yeah. I kind of feel like you're going to get eaten anyway. So I know. I was thinking there's really no probably coming out of that one. There's I, no way I, out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What would what would you pick? Me? Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm not allowed to answer the question. I <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well All right. before we uh play this song, what's uh what's next for Heartless Bastards? You guys are on the road now, you're touring, you're in the middle of it. Um, what's next? I'm sure you're getting some writing in along the road because you write while you're moving, I think, in the vehicle. So what's next? Are you writing songs right now? I'm writing while I'm home. I, I can't really write when I'm on tour. So, um, yeah. It's like a different part of my brain that activates or something. So, um yeah, I'm home for the next two or three weeks. Um, and uh, yeah, and then we start touring. So, but uh, I'm just, yeah, working on writing an, a new album. And uh, yeah, I want it to be, be the best one yet. So um, hopefully folks will concur. And uh, yeah, and to, you know, just trying to enjoy life you know make some find some joy joy out there yeah that's what it's all about for sure totally well erica thank you for coming on here comes heartless bastards thanks so much <laughs> for being here thanks erica thank you so much yeah it was nice to meet you guys Beautiful thing, this. Could 
nadie de Yeah.